Why are so many companies abandoning China? If there were a phrase that characterized globalization in recent decades, it would be made in China as the entire world has become dependent on this giant. Currently, China is considered the world's factory, and practically everything one acquires has passed through its production lines. However, what if I told you that the era of made in China may be coming to an end? In recent years, many companies have been leaving China, and the outlook for the future is not optimistic. Apple, for example, is shifting part of its iPhone production from China to India, planning to expand its scale fivefold in the next two years. This move is just the tip of the iceberg, as other giants like Samsung are also distancing themselves from the Chinese economy. What could be causing this mass exodus of companies from China? And, more importantly, does this pose a danger to us as consumers? If you want to understand more about this topic, follow today's video as we discuss the collapse of the Chinese market and the reasons why so many companies are leaving the country. To comprehend why many companies are leaving China or seeking alternatives for their production, it's necessary to understand why they chose to establish themselves there in the first place. If you've watched videos on this channel about China's rise, you know that until recently, the country was not attractive for foreign business and investments. For much of the 20th century, China was dominated by a communist dictatorship, similar to present-day North Korea. The government was totalitarian, with no freedom to undertake or conduct business, leading capital to seek opportunities elsewhere that were more appealing. However, starting in the 1980s, China began attracting thousands of companies and billions of dollars in investments. This was due to the death of leader Mao Zedong and the rise of Deng Xiaoping to the Chinese government. Xiaoping not only opened the economy to the international market but also took measures to make the country more financially attractive. This change was possible because Xiaoping had a pragmatic and critical vision of what Mao had been doing. He was willing to make concessions to promote economic growth, regardless of whether they were considered more or less socialist. From 1979 onward, he guided the Chinese economy with an extensive plan to boost and modernize it, opening up to the international market, attracting foreign companies, and creating special economic zones, such as Macau and later Hong Kong. Thus, a country once closed to international capital opened its doors to capitalism, and the results were remarkable. The increase in foreign investment began after Xiaoping's rise, but the leader was still not satisfied with the results. Although there was a considerable influx of capital into the country, it was not deemed sufficient. So, what did he do to attract even more companies? Xiaoping launched a plan that offered even more attractive benefits than before. In the taxation area, he granted such significant advantages to foreign companies that Chinese companies couldn't compete. For instance, while Chinese-origin companies faced a tax rate of approximately 25% on their profits, subsidiaries, factories, and branches of multinational corporations paid between 10% and 15%, depending on the sector. Additionally, foreign companies could deduct 100% of their workers' salaries from taxes. And if they reinvested their profits, they could deduct between 40% and 100% of their taxes. In practice, some companies operated almost cost-free during this period, explaining the allure of China in the 80s and 90s. Furthermore, Chinese labor was very cheap at that time, contributing to a significant increase in international investment in the Asian giant. There were concessions and speculations, but establishing oneself in the country or partnering with local entities was a guarantee of growth and profit. Nevertheless, the initial frenzy of companies seeking China reversed, as mentioned at the beginning of this video. Currently, companies are looking to reduce their exposure to China, with some even completely abandoning the country. This phenomenon began approximately a decade ago. Starting in 2008, the proportion of international trade in the Chinese economy started to decline, indicating a less favorable direction for business, investments, and the global economy as a whole. Faced with this scenario, the question arises, why is China deviating from the path that led to significant growth in the past? Let's explore this further. It's not a mere matter of opinion. By 2008, China had already solidified its position as the world's factory, with thousands of companies driving its economy. The country went from being the poor and hungry nation of the past to becoming a robust industrial powerhouse. In light of this new reality, the Chinese government apparently deemed it unnecessary to continue attracting so many foreign companies to the extent that it harmed local businesses. In fact, the opposite of what happened previously occurred. The Chinese Communist Party, CCP, began to protect and benefit Chinese companies at the expense of foreign ones. 
The special tax and taxation conditions of the 80s and 90s were eliminated between 2008 and 2013, partly explaining the slowdown in foreign direct investment in the country. Additionally, the cost of labor became a significant issue, as evidenced by the notable increase in Chinese labor costs since the year 2000. This implies that many companies no longer saw the conditions for easy growth, based on cheap labor, as they did in the past. As a result, they began redirecting themselves to other countries that still offered low wages to workers, such as Thailand and Vietnam. However, in recent years, an additional factor, political risk, has deterred many companies and potential investors. On March 15, 2013, Xi Jinping assumed the presidency of China, marking a shift in the economic thinking established by Xiaoping. While Xiaoping prioritized pragmatism, adopting measures independent of ideology, she took a more participatory stance in the market. In 2014, he launched an operation to promote entrepreneurship in the country, resulting in the creation of millions of new companies. Although it marked the end of the direct involvement of the Chinese government in large companies, it opened space for the development of China's own markets and specialization in new products, such as semiconductors, reducing dependence on foreign trade. The change in Chinese policy is no longer exclusively focused on economic growth. Currently, China seeks to build a new geopolitical power core, even if it involves breaking trade ties with the West. Xi Jinping leads this approach, which intensified with Trump's departure and actions by Joe Biden, such as severe restrictions on technology sales to China and blocks on Chinese companies entering the United States. This stance has generated antagonisms not only with the U.S., but also with neighbors like India and Malaysia, while some countries, including Brazil, maintain a closer relationship viewing China as a threat to integrity. These events, along with higher taxes, rising labor costs, and international tensions, are reasons why companies are leaving China. However, the impact of these changes on the global economy remains uncertain. If, in the past, globalization was synonymous with made in China, today it has become multipolar. The closing of Chinese trade with the rest of the world could result in skyrocketing prices and recession in various economies. But countries, like China, are initiating a process of trade diversification. Malaysia, Vietnam, India, and Mexico have been receiving companies that previously operated in China, adopting similar growth models and gradually replacing Chinese imports. A notable example is the massive investment in the development of semiconductor industries in Mexico and Malaysia, representing a significant shift in the exports of these countries. The growing hostility of China towards the West and its neighbors may lead these countries to unite and collaborate further to isolate the Chinese economy, making it independent of global influence.